All right, at this point, I want to move on to section 4.2. This is about abstract, what are called vector spaces. And these are more general sets, uh, but we're going to use R2 as a model. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that a set V, okay, so this set V is a vector space. If it has two operations, namely vector addition and scalar multiplication, whatever that means in the particular context, and uh, if it satisfies the following 10 properties. You'll notice that I essentially just copy pasted the previous 10 properties for R2, and instead of saying in the plane, I put in the set V. So uh, for example, um, a vector space, uh, well, let's just go over the 10 properties very quickly. Um, if you add two vectors, you get another vector in the vector space. Vector additions commutative, vector additions associative. There exists a zero vector, okay? So uh, where, uh, I need to be a little bit more careful here, where zero, where zero is the zero vector, whatever that means in the context. So I'll explain a little bit more there. Um, for every vector, there's an additive inverse, so that part's fine. If you scale any vector, you get another vector in the vector space. Uh, there's distributive properties. Okay, so 8 and 9 are still uh, distributive properties. There's still the scalar multiplication associative property. And if you take the real number 1 and multiply by a vector, you get the original vector back. You get back u. So any set V with these 10 properties is called a vector space. And so let's talk about some examples, because I think it's important not to get too lost in the abstractness of our discussion here. Uh, first of all, the real numbers themselves are a vector space. Um, over the reals. So we're always talking about, uh, when I say over the reals, what I mean is the scalar set is the real numbers. So the real numbers themselves are a vector space. All 10 properties are true. Uh, we know that R2 is a vector space because that's kind of what we based everything off of. Um, in general, Rn is a vector space where this is again the n-dimensional, or, or rather the set of n-tuples where each coordinate comes from R. So those are all examples of vector spaces, and that's totally fine. Um, a little bit more interesting examples of vector spaces would be the M by N matrices. So M uh, sub MN, or actually I, I should use the, this is the notation I like, but I should use the notation that the book uses, is capital M sub M comma N. And so this is the set of, set of uh, M by N matrices. And I need to be a little bit careful here. When we talk about the set of matrices, our vector addition is just matrix addition, and our scalar multiplication is the scalar multiplication that we talked about in chapter two. Okay, so any set of M by N matrices uh, is gonna be a vector space. And really, like I said before, oops, like I said before, we can think of Rn is the set of 1 by n, or sometimes even the set of n by 1 matrices. So there's no reason why we can't think of Rn themselves as a, as a set of matrices. So those are both examples. Uh, another big example that we'll talk about is the set of polynomials of degree at most n. So this is the set of polynomials uh, of degree at most n. The set of polynomials of degree exactly n turns out not to be a vector space, and we'll talk about why soon. Okay, but a piece of n is the set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. That's a good vector space. Here, vector addition, just to point out, if you add two polynomials, what you get is the sum of the outputs of the polynomials. And if you multiply a function by c, or rather, I wrote that backwards. If you take the function and multiply by c, what that does is, again, you just take the output and multiply by c. So these are the two... Oops. My iPad's freaking out. These are the two uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication properties that we were looking for. Okay. So those are, again, a, a big example of a vector space. And these are going to be our three big examples. Rn, the set of m by n matrices, and the set of polynomials of degree at most n. There's others. Uh, for example, the set of all polynomials. So 
capital P is the set of all polynomials. Um, you could also talk about the continuous functions. So from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that's the set of all continuous functions that are defined over the entire real line. So the set of all continuous functions. Uh, you can actually replace that interval from negative infinity to infinity with any other arbitrary interval, and you'll get a vector space. Okay, so these are a little bit more interesting, um, but they're also a little bit harder to work with in certain senses, and we'll talk about exactly why that is. Okay, but that's what a vector space is.